Hey guys, this is Ron Douglas. We had a couple of technical issues, mostly my fault or all my fault. And uh, but we're on now. I have my guest here. He was on time. Give him full credit for that. Brad Goss is in the building. <laughs> What's up, Brad? How are you, man? Good, good. So Brad Goss, me and Brad Goss go way back, man. We've been good friends for a long time. He's one of my favorite people in the internet marketing space. And uh, we've hung out a bunch of times and he's a brilliant, brilliant marketer. So, you know, when I released my $5 post course on Facebook ads and Facebook advertising, you know, he came to me and he said, okay, well, I'm going to give you a testimonial. I, you know, I, I've gone through your course and it's really good. And I'm, I'm having these great results. So first I thought that he was just being, you know, nice as my buddy, like, right. And then he started showing me these screenshots of his results. And I'm like, wow, you really have it dialed in. You're killing it. So I, I decided to, uh, well, he actually offered to come on and, and share with us exactly what he's doing. So I have him here today and this is informal, no, nothing rehearsed or anything, but we just kind of going to walk through his uh, campaign. He's going to share with you what's working for him and what he learned from the $5 post program. So I'll let you take it away and I'll just jump in with, with questions and stuff. Okay, cool. And I think I'm going to have some questions for you too. <laughs> okay. so, um, yeah, so I've been trying, I mean, I've been trying to do Facebook ads for quite a while. It's been something that, you know, I've never really had a lot of success with. For one reason or the other, it's just not worked for Vector Tunes, the site that we're talking about today that, that I'm using as the case study. I made some slides, so I'll take you through that in a second. But um, I, yeah, I just kind of want to. I've done Facebook ads for years. I was, I, you know, I, I put up a Facebook ad the day they launched the ads platform. I've been using them ever since, and and uh, a lot of successes, but a lot more failures. It's you know, you got to throw a lot of shit at the wall to see what's going to stick. Um, and the the Big takeaway for me from your course, which was something I just never explored before, was lookalike audiences. And um, you know, I, I had already had the, the retargeting pixel on my site and the checkout pixel in place. I had all these. I had some of the components in place uh, in my e-commerce store that that you discussed in the course, but I didn't have lookalike audiences defined. So I built a customer lookalike audience and a visitor lookalike audience, and I started targeting them with ads. So. Um, let's do a quick screen share here and I'll show you what I did. Yeah. Uh, Before you do that, let me just say, you know, I was really impressed by that. I was really like proud of that because you've been doing internet marketing longer than me. You've made millions and millions online and, and you're just one of the top internet marketers. For, so for you to take something, one little piece from my course and actually get results with it, it made me really proud of the course. So thank you for that. And thank you for using it and taking action on it. Well, I think you know, with everything that you that you get when it comes to books or courses or whatever, you want to have a um, you know, if you can get one good thing out of it, then it's you know, and it, that impacts your business, then it's worth the, the the money and the time invested. And I, I got a couple of good things out of your course, and the the, the lookalike audience was the was the aha moment. In fact, uh, I didn't even get to the end of the videos, if I'm honest, because I just got so busy following through. <laughs> I didn't even get to the end, so I need to go back and, and, and there's probably some stuff I don't, you know, that I'm missing out on, but, um, so yeah, so the site we're yeah. talking about today that, that is the, the case study is vectortunes.com. It's a stock vector graphics website. We have, um, almost 13,000 individual cartoons in our database that people can buy for $2 or we have bundles for 10 bucks or seven bucks. We have all these all kinds of different offers, so I'll sort of take you through that in a minute. But um, this is the campaign that I'm running right now, and um, this is as of this morning. I've had 1,575 new uh, customers uh, enter my store and create an account. Um, the cost per conversion was $2.26. I spent about $3,500. And if you look, you'll see there's there's some places where I've paused the ad. I've discovered that um, my conversions drop really poorly on Sundays mm. for some reason. So I, I've turned it off on Sunday. Um, and a couple of times, right now my, my daily budget is uh, $300. And every time I try and raise it, my conversions fall off. Like the, the cost per conversion seems to go up. So I don't know if if I've just hit a ceiling or if I'm going through banner blindness or, or what that is, my, my, my defined audience is over 3 million and I've only reached 
a small percentage of them. So I don't think that it's uh, banner blindness, which is you know, normally where my where my head would go on that. But anyway, it's you know it, it's up and down. So right now it's um, it's set at three hundred dollars. Whenever I raise it, the conversions drop. So yeah, what, how much do you raise it? Do you, you got to raise it like kind of incrementally? Do you do it like three hundred to six hundred, or you try to do three hundred and then three fifty and then four hundred? Well, originally I tried three hundred to three thousand. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, pour gasoline on the fire. That'll do. That'll work. <laughs> you know, I will tell you what happens is, Facebook their their algorithm locks in to that three hundred, right? Yeah. So they're sending you a certain type of person based on your conversion pixel and everything else. So when you raise it from three hundred to three thousand, their system can't optimize that quickly to catch up. So they're gonna spend your money. You know, they're at least going to try to. So they'll start sending you the crappier traffic just to fill in the blanks to spend that money, whereas they're, they, they're not sending you the same quality of traffic, the same type of people, because it takes them a while, the system a while to, to find those people to, to send you. Yeah. So that's what happens. Now, so you now kinda... I'm gonna raise it to like 350, 400. It doesn't seem to want to go any higher. Um, so, or maybe I'm just not giving it enough time to work its way through. But, um, <clears throat> You know, it's my 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 cost to acquire the customer is two twenty six. My lifetime value is uh, ten dollars and seventy one cents, um, but that takes two years to realize, right? So, um, or up to two years to realize. There, obviously, there's lots of cases where people come in and buy a bunch of stuff, but the my my averages work out sort of. You know, I'm my break even on this is six months, but I'm happy to do that. It's it's a real business. I'm, you know, I'm acquiring customers today for the long term. Right. Um, but, you know, having said that, I've got to watch if my conversion rate, you know, which, which has happened, like when I put it up to 3K, my cost per conversion went up over $14. Mm. Um, and then it's, and that it seems to want to go above 10 bucks no matter what I do to raise the budget. So I don't know. Well, I'm happy spending 300 bucks a day on this campaign and what I'm doing is I'm just trying to set like new campaigns with new images. Um, but I'll show you the, the stuff that's working. Oh, so yeah, the other thing that I'm doing, uh, and I don't know if you do this or not, but I use, um, uh, Google analytics tagging. Yeah. So I tag all my URLs with campaign information and you know, all kinds of stuff. So I can actually track right down to the ad, which one converted the best. Do you do that? Yeah, yeah, I do that. I use other programs too, but I, I have it set up with analytics. Yeah, I find it. I just I've always liked analytics. It's pretty straightforward. So, so what's been cool about this campaign is that um, uh, it kind of went viral. So, you know, in this in this time frame here, uh, you can see I've got number one and number two are Facebook. Um, now that this isn't sorted by traffic, this is sorted by e-commerce conversion rate because I wanted to show. These are my sort of, you know, best traffic sources, so to speak. And okay. if you look at Facebook, the conversions one is the ad buys. It's 23.61% conversion rate, e-commerce conversion rate, which is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Then Facebook.com, that's the viral traffic, people sharing my ad um, to their groups and to their pages or just copying and pasting the URL to their groups and pages. That really took off. Like we, you know, I, I would say we got about 25% more traffic from viral um, for free right and that converted at 20.99 percent but then if you go down look at Google Google sends me more traffic than both combined but it's converting at 1.09 percent <laughs> I guess people are looking for free images yes yeah. Google well we have a lot of free images in Google images okay um, but it's still not converting as well and that's what we're doing is we're doing it you know as you've mentioned in your in your uh, course it's you gotta have a free product that's really compelling, um, and so that's what we've done. So uh, the funny thing I discovered too was that uh, when you have a popular ad, you also get trolls. People actually can comment on your ad, not just like if you put a post, people can comment on it, but if you have an ad, people can comment on it as well. And ninety percent of the comments were awesome, like "Oh my god, this is actually legit!" You know, people are like blown away that we're doing this giveaway. Um, which I'll, I'll take you to in a second so you can see what we're doing. I'll show you the ads. But um, I couldn't believe how many people troll the Facebook ads. Like, did you get this? Yeah, yeah, you're going to get people trolling you for sure, for sure. But, I mean, as you said, it helps you with that engagement. Yeah. You know, it, helps you, it helps you get that free traffic 
Twitter. It makes your ad go viral. So you just have to, and it gives you a good chance to, uh, you know, most of the time I, I find when people are trolling you, they're not just trolling you just to be trolling because you could just delete their, their comments, but they're trolling you with genuine concerns about the product or about what you're doing and, and things like that. And, you know, they might say stuff like, you know, is this a scam or, or you know, this is not really free. And, you know, it gives you an opportunity to explain to them and, and set the record straight for people who might be thinking the same thing. And when people see you actively in that post engaged, you'll get less trolls if, you know, cause they, people don't want to talk to your face. The internet, you know, people want to be anonymous, right? But yeah. they're not anonymous on Facebook yeah. usually, right? They think they're just sharing it with their friends when they comment on the ad. Right. Um, when they see you in there, they're like, oh, damn, you know, <laughs> this guy's actually responding to me. Yeah, I respond to everybody. And it is, it is a lot of that. Is this legit? Is this a scam? What's the catch? You know, and I respond to all of them and I explain to them that, the, you know, this is, you know, we're just doing this to introduce you to our store because that's what we're doing. I, I want them to create an account in my store because they're designers and I want them to buy their stock graphics for me in the future. And you know, 90% of it for me is getting them to create that, that account because then the second time is easy. Um, but yeah, this one woman called me racist. She went to the site and she, all she could find was pictures of black men under the, under the headings, legal trouble and angry and bad decisions. And so sometimes I like to troll the trolls. So I sent her this. <laughs> <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> So um, uh, anyway, enough about the trolls. So here's the ad that did the absolute best for me. Um, and I, I should point out that I kind of gave until it hurt here. Like this giveaway, the cost for me to create this free product um, was probably close to 10 grand in terms of what, what I paid the artists to, to create, you know, 3,000 individual vector products uh, that, w that I give away for free. Um, but the cost is pretty hefty to do that. Um, so I'm, I'm saying that because I think a lot of people think that in 2015 they can get away with a free report. Um, and nine times out of 10, the free report doesn't cut it. You, know, you kind of have to have something of heavy value. That's how this got, you know, this one ad, I've got a whole bunch of them, but this one ad got 51 shares. Um, you know, plus all the people just copying and pasting. Like what it doesn't count when it, when you see the shares is it doesn't count people just pasting the link, um, of which there was a ton of that as well. So the more you give away and the more compelling your free offer is, uh, I think the better the ad's going to do. Like I don't think this would have done well if I said you know get five free images when you join or something like that. You know, like I really gave them. I took them to a page where they had literally 3,000 graphics to choose from. They could take them all if they wanted them. Um, so that really worked well. So th this ad was targeted to my visitor customer lookalike audiences. It was about three and a half million people. Um, it takes them, to a, takes them to my store, to the free graphics page. And there's no catch. They literally just add the stuff to their cart, create an account in the store, and check out. There's no payment. They don't have to use PayPal or credit card or any... You know, there's no shenanigans. It's like straight up, get what you ask for, and and uh, obviously they get on my email list when they create an account in the store. Right. And then I have a 99-day autoresponder sequence that they're automatically put into that I've found to work really well. And um, it's all internal offers, uh, mostly internal offers. I have a few affiliate offers in there, but it's mostly internal offers, um, and that seems to work really well for me. Now, over what frequency do they receive these? Uh emails over that 99 days is it every day for 99 days daily uh and i send them broadcasts so i, I email them a lot and the, the feedback i'm getting is they love the emails they don't they don't discount them because a lot of the emails are to really cool cartoons on our website like you know storybook characters or popular sayings or you know stuff that there's that's kind of fun to look at so they're mm -hmm. so they're you know it's not just it's marketing but it's not like the same kind of in your face like I'm not selling business opportunities to these people, so I'm not in their face every day telling them I'm going to make them rich. I'm just saying, hey, check these cartoons out and check this design, this, these templates out. And, um, they like that. Right. So it's, it's worked really well for me. Um, here's two other ads that did fairly well in the same campaign. I, I think I dropped uh, 12 images into the campaign, and I let I let the you know the best ones sort themselves out, and then. Now, shut. how did you how did you decide? 3,000, I mean, it wouldn't have had the same effect if you said download 
a thousand or download 300 images there's still a lot of images like who's gonna i don't want to download 3,000 images <laughs> i just want the images I, I want you know what i mean well, that's the key. When you get to the page, you can choose the images you want. I have them all in bundles, and so you can go and, and pick and choose. So I chose 3,000 because I, I have a variety of, like 3,000 images I think is probably going to be roughly 200 bundles. That, so you'll, you'll go to my, my free page and you'll see um, uh, you know, 200 different bundles. And I'll show you that. Here, I'll take the page. Okay. Um, now, does that... Does that, does that uh discourage them from buying other images if they already have the images they want or are they just prolific image people where they have to have more and more images all the time uh well yeah i mean look there's a there's a definitely a percentage of people uh, let me just switch my screen and share here for you there's definitely a percentage of people who um who want just free stuff they won't they won't get anything else that's all you know it's all they're going to grab is the free um, and that's fine. Like, you know, of those people, you know, that's, that's part of my law of averages, but here's my, um, this is, this is what the free page looks like that they, that they get to. It's not your typical opt-in kind of page. Um, but you go through this and you say, okay, I like this girl taking selfies and you just add her to your cart. No, I like these cats and you add it to the cart and, um, you kind of go through and you pick and choose the stuff that you want and it automatically adds it to your cart and then you just check out for free. On any of the products, and then the other thing that I've done is halfway down the page, um, I've stuck some some ten dollar boxes in here, some featured items, um, and people sometimes add these to their cart as well and pay for them on checkout. Um, but there's over there's three thousand and seventy free ones in the system that they can download, um, but they're they're all in bundles, so they get a zip file with the bundles. But yeah, you pick and choose what you want, so okay. it's it's not you know you don't have to download a 20 gig zip file or something like that. Uh, but you know, this you find is you're getting a lot of, uh, what's that? You find you're getting a lot of organic likes to your page on Facebook as well because of these ads money. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm definitely getting a lot more of that. It's, uh, it's made a big difference. Um, right. Have you ever tried doing this? Like, uh, you know, you have your ad running and there's a direct link to that ad. Like tell your customers, you know, if, if you like the uh, 3,000 vector tunes you just got, let people know, make a comment in this post and send them to that ad to comment. Oh, okay. And then get some, some viral interaction and engagement on that ad. And you have people just saying, oh, I got these. I love these. You know what I mean? Okay, that's a good idea. I should send that. I can send the link to the ad to the mailing list is what you're saying. Yeah, you can send it to the mailing list or you could post it on your page or, you know, however you want to reach your uh, – so I got more that are happy. list than I got to like the page. My email list got more. Right, right. So you you know you can mention that on your email list, like casually in, in a in a content email or whatever. You know, top top like first paragraph. Hey, if you like this, uh, leave me some feedback. That type okay. of thing. Because I'm sure you got a lot of gratitude going on because you gave away so much. Oh yeah, they. I mean, they, dude, they shared the shit out of these ads, and they they copied and pasted the links to their to their walls and to their groups, like. Mm -hmm. And I have a thing on my website that asks people how they heard about us. Right. And that's been really valuable because you can track as much as you want, but you know, it's like, okay, I have this URL and if you pay, if you copy and paste it into your Facebook, it's got no tracking details in it anymore. Most people will pull them out or just won't, won't grab them necessarily. Um, but if they do, if it's from the ad, then I don't see, well, someone copied and pasted this into a group. And so a lot of the time people will say, oh, yeah, I'm in this, cam you know, like they'll write in the referral thing. I'm in, a cam I'm in this Camtasia coaching group on Facebook. And so I go on Facebook and I, you know, contact the admin of the group and find out, uh, you know, if I can join and, and if I can give, you know, gift cards to their group and that kind of stuff. I really engage with the, the people who are sharing our stuff right. and they usually give me access to their group and I can go and see what people are saying about me and, um, you know, uh, answer questions and, and, you know, kind of just offer support as the owner. And that's worked really well. Mm -hmm. um, well another thing with that, uh, a strategy of uh, getting them to comment on your ad, to have your customers to comment, those are all testimonials too. You can screenshot and put it on your, your site. Yeah. Good call. Um, I never thought of that. I should totally do that because I need testimonials on the site. Um, so here's two more of the ads that I did to promote the free that are doing really well. And then um, 
this is I'm going to I have a roadmap at the end. I'll kind of show you the high level overview of how all this works. But this one here retargets the people who visited the site or, or checked out, and uh, this promotes a fifteen to forty seven dollar membership uh, where they get so like. The holy grail for me is to get them to buy um, a forty-seven dollar a month membership, where I give them a hundred dollars to spend in the store every month. Mm. And um, what's great about it is that even if they're in the like, a lot of people have this sort of counterintuitive. Like they, they look at at memberships as oh, I don't want to mail them because I don't want to remind them that they're paying. But for me, I actually do want to remind them that they're paying, and I want to remind them that they've got stuff to download. So. They remain on the mailing list and in the AR sequence because every week we add new uh, cartoons to the site, and so we want them to see that and to grab them so that they use up their credits. So um, it's kind of cool. We can sell them a membership and keep them in the whole, keep them in the marketing sequence, and because they're just getting double value with their gift cards that they're spending. So right. um, so this this goes to a, a sales page uh, specifically designed. To upsell them to a monthly membership. Awesome. And then, uh, okay, so this is the um, this is the roadmap just to kind of lay it out um, how it works. So that so people come in, I call it the ridiculous free offer. Like I just give them so much stuff that they they have to download something, um, and then the leads go into the autoresponder sequence. They get uh, retargeted for membership purchases. They get retargeted for product purchases in Facebook. Like we promote a lot of individual products. Uh, on day seven in the autoresponder sequence, I send them a ten dollar gift card. It's an actual PDF gift certificate with a gift card with a with a coupon code built into it. Right. And I, so I attach it. Like they get an email on day seven with an attachment. Um, you can do that with your autoresponder, and not many people use it, but I kind of like to leverage attachments every once in a while because it's like a bit of a pattern interrupt. Your most marketing emails won't come with, a, with an attachment. Mm -hmm. So I attach a PDF gift card with a $10, like, you know, no strings attached. They don't, they don't have to spend 20 They just go in and use the $10 gift card and buy, buy one of our premium items for 10 bucks. And it's just, it, it's literally just, hey, thanks for, you know, hope you, hope you liked our site and, Here's ten bucks to come back, and um, we get a lot of replies to that email, and like people really thankful that I did that. And for me, it's I want to create a habit. I want them to come back to the store and check out again because I want them to get used to using it. And the more they, the more I make it a habit, even if I have to make it a habit by giving them some free money, because I have tens of thousands of dollars worth of cartoons in the store. Like you, you know, if I give you ten dollars, it doesn't really damage. My ability to sell you something in the future. Gotcha. Um, so I so I send them a gift card, and then I also do a personal email on day fourteen, I think, or I can't remember the day number, but I send them a personal email that says it's from me that asks them for suggestions. What you know? What are you looking for that we don't have? Um, and people really respond to that email as well, and they like that I reach out and ask that, and I follow through. So if somebody says, you know, I need images of horse racing or some guy last week some guy was like I need images of heavy metal rock singers it's like okay so we put it in our workflow and and then it comes out a couple of weeks later and they're always blown away that we listened nice, nice. now do, nice. You, do you do anything with uh, like holidays coming around like Halloween images would be a good thing to sell right now I suppose to uh, designers that looking to do something special for the holiday we have them. We don't, you know. It's funny. We we probably should be doing more promotions around that kind of stuff. Like, we have the we have Halloween images. We have Christmas images. We have Thanksgiving, and we have all that kind of stuff. Um, but we haven't really effectively, you know, gone after that market. We probably should, and, you know, sort of just bundling the stuff together and offering specials around that holiday to, to get them to buy all of it or whatever. Um, just it's always kind of just been I've always just kind of left that stuff alone and figure people will find things through search when they need them and, and it might be a good promotion to, to email out you know yeah. I know like uh, every especially during Christmas people like to change up their websites to make it look more Christmas like things yeah. like that so maybe those type of images would, would do well yeah no I think it's a good idea I'm definitely gonna do it why not um, so what do you I mean you, Based on what you've seen, what am I missing? What you know? What what do you think? What else could I be doing? 
Well, I mean, I, I think you're, well, except for the holiday thing I just mentioned, I think you're pretty much on target. I think uh, you need to get more traffic. It seems to be doing well for you. I would have you tried duplicating the ads and just you know switching one little thing up or switching one little image or something, but having the same target and duplicating it? Yeah, I've been, that's what I've been doing is kind of creating a similar ad and then, you know, changing up a few a few words or changing up the images and uh, I've, I've put in it's it's funny you know I've, I've gone through um, people like the cartoon images right so what I do is what's worked really well for me is I take a stock photo like um, you know these I get these like Creative Commons stock photos from uh, Unsplash or one of these other free websites where you get the stock photos and uh, I'll download them and open them up in Photoshop and then I'll drop the vector on top of the stock photo, so it's like a cartoon with a stock photo background, and that seems to have really resonated with click throughs. Like people click on them, they they seem to respond really well, um, and so I've tried, you know, and that I I found out that worked just just like because I had an Instagram account and I started to get way more likes when I started mixing vectors with stock images and kind of creating right. these layered things, and and they're really easy to do. So I just started doing them with Facebook ads. Um, when I tried just cartoons only. They, they don't get as many clicks as when I mix them with a stock photo. Um, maybe it's just a pattern interrupt. People haven't seen it before. Or I, I don't know. But um, I have one image that's performing, it's outperforming all the rest of them. And I don't know why. And I haven't been able to, to duplicate the success of that image. So I'm, I'm doing a lot of testing to try and get other images to do the same kind of numbers. But I'm striking out a lot. Right. What's, what's like your uh, typical... Uh, maybe you showed these numbers already, but like when someone lands on a landing page, what's the conversion rate of people uh, taking that offer? 24% uh, from Facebook ads take the offer. That's not too bad, 24%. Yeah. Right. Um, Do you so have that, testimonials on that, that page too? Or maybe that would help in, increase that? I don't. Uh, I, I probably could put them on that page somewhere, uh, but they'd be far down on the page. And I'm finding that anybody who's scrolling is adding stuff to the cart, right? It's... Mm. The, you put it on like the, a right column. Uh, I could, yeah, I could put it in the column. I'm, I, I, I kind of like leaving it alone, but I think I, I should split test that. Um, I should try yeah, and put some testing in the right column. Because I, I, you know, I find the main thing is people just don't want to give you their email. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like seventy six percent of them are like, ah, I got to give you my email. Ah, I don't want to get, I don't want the email. So maybe some type of reassurance of what they're gonna get after they give their email, because they click on the ad, they obviously want the you know image or at least someone interested, but 76% of them are like, okay, what is he gonna do with my email? Who else did, if there's like testimonials saying, you know, I, I got this, I had a great experience, that type of thing, maybe you can yeah. boost that. that one yeah, I thing. should try that. Um, I, I, and now that I'm thinking about it, I should probably also try uh, the uh, social connect, like Facebook connect. Uh, as opposed to just giving me their email address, they can log in with Facebook. Yeah, who, who are you using? Like, what autoresponder? Um, well, I'm, so I'm using um, WooCommerce uh, mm -hmm. as my e-commerce backend. Okay. And then I have the GetResponse plugin. So anybody who creates an account is automatically added to my GetResponse list. So that part's kind of dialed in. They're they're going. They're opting in by creating an account on the WordPress platform on the on the WooCommerce okay. backend. So, do, do they have to confirm? Is it d double opt-in? Uh, no, it's single opt-in. Uh, mainly because if you, it, what's if that? you did it with the Facebook Connect, would it would it be single with get response or double? I could be single with with Facebook Connect. I don't see why. Okay, I know I use Aweber, and I know they used to have this thing where with the Facebook Connect, it's this has to be confirmed opt in, but you can contact their support and say, you know, make this through the Facebook Connect, make it single opt in for this particular list. I think um, because they're because they're checking out, they're actually getting something. Like people are, you know, it's funny when I've done other opt in offers. You know, I find that people put a lot of crap in there. Like they they put you know crappy emails. Junk emails, and they put a lot of like you know negative names and stuff like that in, like you know fuck you and you know ASD JJF, you know, and that kind of stuff. Uh, but what's cool about what I'm doing is the the 
the product that they're getting isn't necessarily a product, it's a license. It's not a free report. It's not, I'm not showing them a magic trick and then saying, hey, come and here's the, you know, come and find out the solution to the trick where they're just kind of like jerky and they just want the answer. They're getting a license. They have to actually give me their real info because they mm -hmm. understand how a stock image works and they can't just put in junk info because I actually register that information and keep it on file because if we, if we catch people using our images, we need to know, hey, this guy actually is a legitimate license holder. Gotcha. Uh, so, you know, if you buy, it's the same with iStock Photo. You're not going to give iStock Photo fake information, right? They're licensing your photos. You don't want your clients getting lawsuits from Getty Images or whatever. So, right. um, so people are, are honest. They give me the real info. They don't, you know, very few people put fake info in. Okay. Yeah, so maybe that's another reason why it's 24% uh, and not higher because they know they can't put the fake info in. So they're like, I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. yeah. Have you I tried? That's, um, that's a pretty good, I think 24% is good personally. I've never seen those kinds of numbers on, on an opt-in like that before. Um, you know, and I've tried that same landing page with a bunch of traffic sources paid, you know, and free and nothing is converting like that. One, that's yeah, so one in four, good. I'm just one in four people, you know, that's pretty good. Um, pretty good. I'm just trying to think how it could be better, but you know, 24% is pretty good. I mean, I've gotten with cold traffic as high as like 30, 32%, 33% with Facebook ads. So it's not that, I mean, I, but I guess a lot of those are crap emails too. So you have to back those out to see what your true percentage is. And if you look at the, the, so if you think about it from a testimonial perspective, the viral side of it is converting around the same. It's converting at 20, almost 21%. So, and the viral is a testimonial, right? Because it's somebody in your Facebook group is posting, hey, I just got this, check it out, it's really cool. So it's coming with that sort of warm referral and it's still converting at 21. So I think, um, I think if I'm to improve that, I've got to figure out, um, I think it's going to be on the copy on the page itself and, and, and um, like you said, possibly testimonials. I'm going to test that just to see. How it works if it if it increases or decreases conversions. Uh, what you're doing is, is brilliant, though. You really ha you really have a high value offer, and I'm, I suppose you're not getting too many complaints because people are really getting what you you know you're giving, and it's high value, and you're targeting designers, and you know so you're definitely doing it the right way. It's like no no tricks or anything like that, and people don't feel like it's bait and switch. And yeah, exactly. They get everything they were promised and more. <laughs> you know, we give them extra. Uh, and that's, you know, so we, we're creating a good relationship with everybody. It's kind of a, it's a feel good thing. You know, it's not promises and, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of shady stuff on Facebook and, and people, people have contacted us and said like, you know, you wouldn't believe how many times I've clicked on one of these ads and it's been, you know, okay, give us your credit card and now we're going to charge you 99 bucks. I'm like, wait a second, what, you know, and we don't do any of that. Um, and so I think. The, the trust level with Facebook ads is low and we're kind of giving people a, a unique experience where they're like, oh my God, this is, you're the alternative. Like you actually gave me something and didn't expect anything huge in return. Um, and the other thing that I do is I have an option at the bottom of every email. I have a little disclaimer that's like, are you getting too many emails from us? Because I email them sometimes twice a day. Um, right. And I know me personally, I don't like that. but. It works. It works. So I do it. But as a receiver, I I'd be like, all right, too many emails. So at the bottom of the thing, I have a, a little a little blurb, and I send them to a page on the website where they can opt into another email list with FeedBurner. Uh, Google FeedBurner delivers the list. It's all triggered on my RSS feed because we do once weekly updates where we put in you know anywhere from four to ten new bundles every week. And okay. So that automatically goes into our RSS feed and then FeedBurner sees that and sends out one email with all the new updates in one long email. Uh, so they get one email a week and then they can remove themselves from the daily email list. And so we get a lot of people that jump over to that and so they still get our updates. I imagine, I imagine the deliverability on that is off the charts with Google and FeedBurner sending it directly. Yeah, I really, I've always been a fan of FeedBurner. Not many people use it, but because uh, RSS feeds are kind of like antiquated now. Everybody's, because they got they got used so much in spam, they're kind of, not, not many people use them anymore. But uh, if you have a good e-commerce store where you're always putting new products in, whether it's physical or digital or whatever, um, 
FeedBurner has a, a RSS to email service, and they give you an opt-in box for your website, but it's all managed through Google. And yeah, the deliverability is amazing. Um, and people trust it because it's coming from Google and it's coming from FeedBurner and it's like a third party service. And you know, you can drive a lot of traffic back to your website through it. Right. Well, two things came to mind uh, just now. Uh, with your with scaling your ads, have you tried putting like a uh, set date on it? Like a uh, Ex expiration date on the ad because what hap tends to happen is they, they tend you tend to give you that traffic because they know your ad is expiring in like a week or two weeks so they'll try to squeeze in that traffic and give it to you during that time period okay like, try do, like kind of creating a similar ad but putting like a set time frame on it okay i'll give that a shot try that yeah, and I, the other I, thing was um have you tried taking that conversion pixel and running a look-alike audience based on that conversion pixel, creating a lookalike off of that conversion pixel? I uh, don't think so. I think I did it off my email list, my customer email list. So yeah, yeah I should have it definitely want to do that. Okay. The conversion pixel, Facebook has that intelligence because it's their conversion pixel. So now when you create a lookalike off of, off of that, it's probably going to be an even more powerful lookalike than the one you did off of your email list. That's just gone to the top of my list. That's I'm going to do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, yeah, because that's that's the key for me has been the lookalike audience. That's I've never been able to find my customers. Like I go after graphic designers, and I go too broad, and I don't, you know, I, I go after you know people who like other stock photo companies, and uh, I go. To, it, it's it's always been difficult, but I do have a lot of that. Like you saw, Google see, Google feeds me more traffic than Facebook, but it doesn't convert half as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so I have a lot of people who are looking for images in my conversion pic or in my uh, visitor pixels, so I can retarget them um, and, and create lookalike audiences. And uh, but I, you know the the visitor and the customer lookalike audiences seem to perform the same. But I'm going to test the uh, the conversion pixel lookalike and see what happens. Yeah, definitely test that. Let me know your results. I'm pretty sure you're going to get some good results from that because it's already converting. It's like you have the conversion pixel now. You make it a lookalike based off of that, which is as close to that conversion pixel as you could possibly get. Yeah. And the the memberships that I'm buying as well, I've, I've, I've been able to sell, it, it's retargeting the the visitors and the customers, uh, but it won't go above like 10 bucks a day. I've set it to 100 bucks a day, but it won't, just won't, I, I don't have enough people, I guess, to display it to, but it's managed to sell two memberships for me uh, at a cost to, to create the member, the, the cost to sell or to get the memberships from Facebook was below twenty bucks a membership. Um, my return on those is closer to eighty bucks, so that's working too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard to jump like that big of a jump, you know. Like in, in the training in the five dollar post, I actually have an example, like a, a letter, a email from Facebook explaining why, you know, it doesn't work. Like your ads stop, stop getting traffic. When you when you go in and pause like edit the ad when it's as it's running that like messes up the algorithm. It's like once you have it set, you just kind of let it run and then gradually, you know, increase it. But Facebook said themselves in this letter, saying uh, you know that messes up our algorithm and you know this system I guess is still evolving and it's still pretty much new. It's not as old as Google AdWords or something like that. But it's just a little quirky. It just it takes some time to figure out all the little quirks in it. Yeah. Well, dude, you know what? I'm the, the numbers I'm getting right now are are good, and I'm happy with them. And and you know, definitely got to try some of this other stuff. But uh, yeah, I I got a lot out of the course, man. It was uh, you know, this is the this is the for for this particular business, the first Facebook ads campaign I've been able to get profitable and get working and be able to you know justify um, putting more money into it. That's awesome, man. That makes my day to hear you say that. And thanks a lot. <laughs> That's very good. Awesome. All right. Well, I guess that, you know, we shared some nuggets in this. I'm going to try to, like, uh, watch it and pull out some notes and maybe send an email about it. So if you guys are on my email list, ron at rondouglas.com. If you want to get stock images and vector images, vectortoons.com is uh, Brad's site. He has some really good deals. Where, where can people get that uh, 3,000 free image offer? You have a URL for that? Uh, if you go to vectortoons.com, right in the top – thing it says free vector graphics and just click on that and uh, it takes you right to the page where you can grab all 3,000 graphics.
yeah so if you need graphics three thousand right there you know go ahead and and grab that offer right on brad's site vectortones.com all right guys ron douglas brad goss hopefully you got some good stuff out of this and we'll talk to you soon have a great rest of your day see ya thank you